will find useful. And then, uh, Freddie, I'll pass the mic over to Freddie, and Freddie can, can uh, comment on what I've said if he wishes and, and add anything that, that he would like. So we all have different approaches uh, to this, and Naveed as well, if, if, wish, if needs be, and then a question and answer. Uh, at the end, so I'll keep mine as brief as I can and allow as much time as possible for questions. Could we ask that, that people, if they have questions, put them into the chat box? And Naveed, as we go along, we'll be having a look at them and we'll, we'll, we'll try and get a representative sample of, of the topics. So it's going to be impossible in the time we've got to cover every question from everybody, but we'll be as, uh, you know, try and be as efficient as we can. Um, so essentially, what we're what we're discussing in these, these medically unexplained symptomatology is is, is uh, what what I, I like to describe as the refuge of the diagnostically and therapeutically destitute. You know, these, these patients who have got genuine uh, discomfort, disease with a hyphen in their 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 the physical, emotional, psychological discomfort of some sort. Um, but but no, the, you know, thorough medical investigation has has maybe picked up one or two things that can be addressed and looked at, but. Uh, the, the their symptomatology isn't 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 resolved by, by by this, and this has become sort of my interest since I retired from general practice. Is really the worried well, you know, uh, Milton Erickson, who's the father of, of clinical hypnosis, he coined the term clinical hypnosis, and his definition is what to do when you don't know what to do, um, and, and what the specialists do when they don't know what to do is to send these patients back to their GP who didn't know what to do with them in the first place, which is why they referred them. So you get into this potential vicious circle. Um, so so we have to to have some sort of resource and. Essentially, in, in the West, our Western medicine is about doing stuff to people, putting a tablet into them or putting a, an instrument into them or, or doing some sort of external procedure on them. And, and what, what, we, what we need to do is to change the paradigm, essentially. And the first thing is we've already established by the time they've come back that, that they, they aren't diseased in the sense of a, a textbook medical diagnosis of into a lump or an abnormal chemical or something that needs addressing, that, that, that they're diseased. And so we move from, from away from, from therapy you know, they're not broken, so they don't need fixing. Um, so we change, uh, it's a linguistic softener, we change from, from therapy to treatment. They need some treatment, and, and, and that, that immediately is a more pleasant concept, you know, that you're going to have some sort of a treat. It's going to be a pleasant experience and, and going to be enjoyable, and things things can be different, so we can we can bring some hope. So these are our communication skills, really important part of, of the work. Um, again, back to Milton Erickson, whose work has advised pretty much all of, of my approach. You know, he, he said that... Uh, um, if you give the patient long enough, they'll tell you what the problem is. And if you give them a bit longer, they'll tell you what they need to do about it. Uh, five minutes should be plenty. So although we only have 10 minutes with the patient in general practice, we have as many 10 minute sessions as we like. So over a period of time, you can build up a good therapeutic relationship with someone. And in the luxury of uh, working outside the clinic, you can have an hour, an hour and a half and, and get a lot of work done in that sort of time. But it only takes a little while and, and just, just opening a, a, a healing, helping space and letting people talk and, and communicate. And they communicate, of course, with their body language and their physiology as much as they do with their words. So we, back to my first point, Hippocrates himself, you know, the father of Western medicine, said that it's natural forces within us which are the true healers of the disease. Uh, the problem is that thinking gets in the way. So what we need to do, again, this is Hippocrates, still the mind. And what we what we need can 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 emerge so we can the work is summoning the healer within essentially so if you come on to medically unexplained symptomatology just to get a technical just for a minute or two it basically breaks into in, in from a medical point of view into to sort of two different groups so so-called central sensitization syndromes where, where there's an element of hypervigilance and and uh, symptoms are, 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 are you know pain for example is, is felt uh, in, in excess of any pathology or otherwise producing it and very often in the absence of any obvious pathology so it's there as a message um, uh, and the, the chronic fatigue syndrome is another fibromyalgia is chronic fatigue syndrome with, with, where tension is held in muscles so there's muscular pain included all the irritables so irritable bowel irritable bladder etc the chronic regional pain syndromes chronic pelvic pain etc etc they, 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 they all can come under this blanket there's often some pathology to be found and that can be treated appropriately but often symptomatology remains and then there's the typical conversion symptom symptomatology which is the functional neurological disorders you know where, where the, the things like pseudo seizures and tics and, and uh, the neurological manifestations of things like shell shock post-traumatic stress disorder and whatever so there's all, all this range of symptomatology that we can be looking at um, and from Point of view, you're listening to, to some teaching given by hypnotists. The, 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 the uh, consideration I'd like to, to discuss very briefly is just symptoms as hypnotic phenomena. 
Um, and basically, the, the, there's a lot of discussion in hypnosis about whether there's such a thing as trance, whether it's a, a, a genuine phenomenon or whether it's just an observed behavior. Uh, so there are trance and non-trance schools of hypnosis, but in all schools, there's general agreement that the, the two things that are, that are the, the diagnostic of hypnosis taking place, if you like, are, are automatic, automaticity. So, so this this uh, this feeling of, of things just just happening. It's just happening. So we see this with uh, um, uh, idio motor idiosensory phenomena like stiff arms and, and catalepsy and, and this sort of thing. Um, so automaticity applies to symptoms. You know, I want this, but that's happening. You know, I've got a pain in my belly, or uh, I feel tired all the time. Whatever, uh, I don't want to, but but it, it's happening. It's something that I have no conscious control over. Uh, so automaticity is one uh, factor of a hypnotic phenomenon. The, the other, uh, which which uh, is diagnostic, if you like, is, is trance logic, which is the ability to hold two apparently contradictory realities in mind simultaneously and find that they both make some sense. So this is very true of of, uh, of these so-called functional symptoms. You know that, that uh, you know I've got a, a pain in my belly or I feel tired all the time, uh, but there's no obvious cause for it. You know, but there's nothing wrong. Um, which is, is right both times because there isn't anything wrong in terms of, 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 of Western style pathology, but these things are functional. They have a function. There's a, a part of the unconscious mind uh, has an intention, which is being, which having, has it, having a need met. So in, in the medicine I was taught, often people would be described as having a secondary gain. You know, their, their symptoms aren't getting better because they're getting some benefit from it. And I think this is not a very helpful concept. I think it's far better to think of, of something as a, a primary gain at an unconscious level. You know, the, 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 the part of the personality that's driving the bus is, is not accessible to conscious awareness and negotiation and, and talking to, but, but it is, is, is having a need met. So what we need to do is, is, to, is to, to meet this with creative curiosity um, and, and, and engage with it creatively so it can, can transform and whatever need it has that needs to be met can be addressed uh, in, in other ways. The unconscious can find other ways of doing it. The point being that when the, the need was first met and, and this method, whatever it was that, that, that happened and that developed, it, it, it served a positive purpose um, and just it dissociated into unconsciousness so we don't, can't consciously access it, but it still runs as a pattern. So the metaphor I, I use very often with patients is like doing a software, doing an up, update on a, a software update on the phone. You know, the, the phone's running slowly, it's not running the program, there's probably nothing wrong with the phone, it's not broken, it's just running outdated software. And the software where it was installed, it worked perfectly well for what it was designed to do, but there's new apps in there which new update which need new updated software. There's no need to get rid of the phone. So that would those are the basic points: automaticity and trans logic. And, and the uh, one of the fundamental problems we have, I think, in, in the, the Western medicine, I was taught with these sort of issues that, that defy diagnosis, is, is that, that uh, uh, we, we we create an identification around them. We tend to pathologize people. You know, I'm I'm the doctor. I'm okay. You've got this problem, and we stick a label on it. Uh, which they immediately then start to identify themselves with. Uh, you know, so, so I am depressed rather than I am someone who is doing depression very well at the moment, or, or uh, you know, I am tired all the time, I am exhausted. Um, so the first job we have to do is to disidentify people, you know, remove the identity, move the label from them. You know, they're, they're, they're not tired all the time, they're someone who is feeling tired all the time. You know, the, the principle being that the body keeps the score. You know, the, the, the body is essentially the unconscious mind and it, it doesn't have a voice. It can't send us a text or write to us or an email or speak to us and say that it's got a need. It does it with symptoms and emotions and feelings. And, and we need to be tuned into this and, and, and listen and learn what it's trying to tell us. So, so the, the, our approach, the, the, the way I was traditionally taught uh, is, is, is to, to do this labeling. Um, and the other, as, as Michael already observed, is this creates great isolation as well. Um, you know, we're, we're isolated by our symptoms. You know, no one can ever have felt as bad as I feel now. This, this is awful and it's a very unique and personal experience. And of course it is. You no know, two people have the same, the same issue, but, but this, this problem, you know, the doctor saying, well, I'm okay, but you've got this problem, uh, immediately is an isolating or potentially an isolating factor. And we need to, to, to address this and, and to, to find a, a creative, healthy environment Again, Erickson said that the, the therapist's job is, is, is like the weather, is to create an environment in which, in which healing can take place. Uh, and disease occurs when the mind and the body have lost contact with each other. I want this, but this is happening. So the, the work is reuniting mind and body so the two could start working together. 
So that's interesting. Something in me is waking up. I'm sure that makes sense. And find a welcoming holding place so, so that this gift, that message it's got, this need that needs to be met can then be, be creatively met and, and, and resolved. So I think those are the, the points I'd, I'd like to make uh, about the, 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 the kind of the theoretical background to what we're doing. Far more relevant and appropriate is, is how can we do this? Um, and so by opening up a creative dialogue, by accepting uh, our state, essentially, if we the, the, the most the single most important factor in creating or getting any outcome is our state. So if we can adopt a state of creative curiosity about, about what's going on and you know what is what is this body trying to tell us? What, what's what's the message? That we're, we're, that's is seeking to be communicated here and open up these avenues of communication. This allows the change to, to evolve and grow. Again, our classical hypnotic approach, we, we use an approach of, of suggestion linked to emotion. Um, in in a, a, a sort of second generation hypnosis, Ericsson's work, again, he used a, a more indirect approach. And we, Ericsson used hypnosis, classical hypnosis, of about 25% of, of people who came to see him. A lot of his work was done conversationally, but using an indirect approach, using these conversational skills of, you know, think things in the, the area of, of, uh, of metaphor um, and, and reframing, just allowing transformation in this way. Um, so, and, and the most key skill, the most important skill is calibration. You know, the patient is giving you information all the time. This is, you know, those are the hypnotic background. You know, so I script by using script-based techniques, just, just don't cut the, the mustard. You've got to be calibrating and watching the patient all the time. As you're talking and particularly as they're talking uh, and, and looking for responses because their unconscious is communicating information to you all the time um, and most of the work certainly when i started to learn hypnosis which was pretty early in my career i realized that most of these paid people although they're, 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 they're very highly hypnotizable if you do hypnotize like hypnotizability scales with them they're highly hypnotizable but what most of them need is actually de-hypnotizing you know the, the, the change happens at the level of belief and, and they you know, they're, they're, they're not ill in the conventional Western sense of the word, but they believe they're ill. Uh, and, and if you can change that belief and help them to learn a different belief, then, then they can start to, to learn and change and grow. So the work is creating this, this healthy atmosphere where this can happen. Um, so that's, that's the, the essential points in, in my, my brief period of time. And what I propose to do is take through a very, very quick uh, a model essentially uh, of what pretty much any and every effective intervention technique uh, ticks four boxes essentially and I'm going to just do those and then give you a very quick linguistic way of, of, of using this which can be used in any of these particular problems. I know I've not spoken particularly about chronic fatigue syndrome uh, diagnosed basically on the basis of it's a syndrome it's symptoms so there isn't any any pathological any abnormal tests or anything it's uh, by definition, something that's been going on for more than 12 weeks, chronic, feeling chronically tired, usually or always put the post, there's a post-exertional factor to it, sleep disturbances, cognitive dysfunction, often associated pain, uh, fibromyalgia and chronic pain syndromes. And essentially, uh, in view of a functional disorder, it, it, its function is protecting the system against overactivity. The, the part that's, that's driving the bus wants the person to, to rest. Um, so that's chronic chronic fatigue and, and any of the things we're going to be talking about in the weeks to come, irritable bowel syndrome, stress, anxiety, all the other topics that, that we've flagged up, all follow essentially the same pattern. And basically the, any any effective technique, not just hypnotic, but any 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 uh, talking psychotherapeutic type technique ticks four boxes, basically. There's identifying the problem state and having the, the, the individual or patient identify into the problem state. Uh, and then dissociating from that, some sort of pattern interrupt, so, so that they're doing it and then suddenly stop, and then associating them into a resource state, and then bringing that resource state, i.e. the way they want to be, back to, back to the problem, and, and, and uh, in NLP terms, collapsing the anchor, so that when the trigger for the, the problem comes, the resource state comes instead. Um, so if that sounds a bit like Goldigook, what I'd suggest, or what I invite you to do, participation entirely voluntary, but if there's something along these lines that, that you'd, you'd be interested in working with what I'd ask you to do. First, basically, is, is the ecological check. You know, is it appropriate and is it sensible and reasonable to, to, to reduce whatever symptom or deal with whatever tiredness or whatever it is? Is, is it an appropriate uh, and safe thing to do? Has it been properly investigated, uh, etc. And then just being aware of the problem, just allow yourself to think of, of what the problem is. So if it is fatigue, it is just be aware Think of a time where you felt particularly fatigued. If you're fatigued at the moment, that helps, but it, you need to associate into the problem. So just recall how it feels. Um, and just 
become aware of the memory or the, the feeling at the moment and just get, get in touch with the felt sense you know, where you feel it particularly in your body you can amplify it by perhaps giving the feeling a color you can give it a name if you like just become aware of, of, the, of the felt sense and then what i invite you to do is just think of your telephone number and just say it backwards to yourself in your head when you've done that just think about how you'd rather be feeling instead how, how you'd prefer to feel how you how you'll feel when you no longer have the problem and just allow yourself to just feel this now just if you can't do it automatically just think of a time when you felt particularly relaxed or comfortable or pain-free or energized a time when you were doing the thing that, that whatever it is that's stopping you doing now that you'd like to do and just be aware of that feeling just be aware of where you feel that maybe giving that a color maybe being aware of where it feels strongest in your body maybe giving it a name and then take this feeling back to where you were a minute or two ago when you weren't feeling so good and just notice how it feels now and just notice any difference And if you want to, if you've noticed any useful, helpful difference, just think of a time in the future where the same sort of problem might arise again. And just see yourself getting through that differently. If it's a, an energy, if it's a fatigue thing, you've been able to do the thing that you, the fatigue is stopping you from doing, feeling energized and just be aware of yourself in that state doing that. that basic pattern of, of associating into the problem state then interrupting the pattern dissociating from it associating into a desired resource state and then bringing that resource state back to the, the present situation this is described by one of the great NLP teachers a chap called John Overduff as the meta pattern and pretty much any effective intervention will follow that sort of pattern so I think I've had my 20 minutes ready so I'm very happy to field any questions towards the end, but I think it's time for me to throw the microphone. Thanks, Mark. Thanks very much. And anyone who's asked any questions, I think we can have some time at the end too. So thanks very much. Well, I'm going to speak more specifically about chronic fatigue because, as Mark said, it's a syndrome. And that's the kind of name that medical people give for something that's unexplained they can't they, they don't know how to deal with really as mark said it goes from the gp to the specialist from the specialist back to the gp and and it's a horrible thing for people with chronic fatigue when you when you've got a problem that that people that, that, that the medical people don't know how to deal with i mean it's one of the things that's most important with any kind of healing is the hope of a recovery and when you're being told that the only thing they can do is it, you know, they say saying it's all in your head. <laughs> Let's be honest, everything's in our head. Um, everything's perception. But past that point, so my understanding, and I'm not a medical person, let's get that out of the way first. So if I say something <laughs> that sounds slightly medical and it's way off, that's because I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to medical stuff. So the thing is, this is how it looks for me. As a hypnotherapist, my thinking on is this is very simple. Your whole being is, and this is a, my, it's a Freddy theory, as I say, don't, it's not written in stone. This is my Freddy theory. I believe that we're only, our brain is only ever trying to do one of two things for us. It's trying to protect you or it's trying to give you pleasure. So it's there, if you like, if you go back to how we were two million years ago, it's there for procreation and survival. Let's get back to the very basic bones of it. But basically, our, our mind and brain is pretty much the same as it's always been. So um, when a client comes into me, the question I just ask myself is, is this problem about pleasure? Because if it's not about pleasure, it has to be about protection. So the thing about chronic fatigue is this. As, as I was saying, medical people really don't have an answer to it. And they might give you depression pills. I don't know because I'm not a doctor, but they'll give you something but it's, it never touches the problem. Now, this is a theory that's been, been around for a while, but not many people know it. Let me first explain how 
a phobia begins because we're going to get into and if someone wants to, to do this in a while i'm going to pull someone out who's got chronic fatigue i'm going to run this technique with them it'll take 10 minutes if someone wants to be a demo subject let me first explain my simple layman's term of how a phobia begins there's a part of our brain it's called the, the amygdala in a human it's about as big as an almond but it's probably the most primitive part of a human being. Every creature with a vertebrae has an amygdala. And what it does, among other things, it runs our fight and flight response. I'm just gonna, I've got Mark on my screen here, so I'm just gonna pin myself to the screen if that's okay. Just so I've, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Mark for the moment, right, okay. So it runs our fight and flight response. And as I said, in very simple terms, this is what happens. Imagine a dog jumps up and bites you. You feel the pain, the amygdala fires off, and it takes a snapshot of the dog. And everything about that dog, the way it smells, the way it looks, the way it sounds, in an instant, in a millisecond, everything about that dog is laid down as a template to be avoided in the future. So it's like a one-stop learning. A dog bites you, um, and it happens with physical and emotional pain. So if, if you're at school and you're continually bullied by a teacher or by another pupil, throughout your life, anyone that sounds like that, smells like that, looks like that, you're going to feel this anxiety-wise. Once the dog's bitten you, the amygdala fires off, it's laid down a pattern, this is to be avoided. And anything that looks like that, your body, you don't have to think about it, your brain will flood your body with adrenaline so you can run or you can fight. And it happens in an instant. You don't have conscious control over this. This is a, 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 an automatic function, if you like. Now, it works with physical pain, as I said, it works with emotional pain. The reason I'm explaining how this is a brief potted version of how phobia is developed. The reason I'm saying this is because every client I've seen with chronic fatigue, they have the same experience. They are going through a viral illness, and for a lot of people, it's teenagers, they're going through glandular fever at the same time as going through their exams. So let's put this in context. You're, you've got a physical uh, illness, you've got a physical problem, at the same time as going through an extreme trauma. In the same way as when a dog bites you, the amygdala fires off, takes a snapshot of the dog, everything connected to that dog is laid down as a pattern to be avoided in the future. If you've got, and you can check this with all of your own patients, ask them the question, have they had a viral illness at the same time as going through a trauma? It can be going through a divorce, it can be going through losing someone, someone that's died, at the same time as you're feeling ill. Now, what happens is this, those two things get connected in your mind in the same way as the dog and the fear. So what happens is this, if I get ill, if I get a cold, I get flu, I think, you know, I'm gonna, I feel really rough, I'm gonna be okay in seven or six, five or six days. And generally that's what happens. But if you've had a viral illness at the same time as having a trauma, those two things are connected. So what happens in the future, because, you're suffering from this trauma. Your, your body is continually being flooded with adrenaline because you're going through your exams or you're going through a, a divorce or you're going through some other trauma. Your body is flooded with adrenaline at the same time as having this viral illness. So those two things then get connected in your brain. So what happens after that is this. You get over the viral illness, you forget about the trauma, but the next time you get ill, the, the amygdala fires off. <laughs> And it floods your body with adrenaline because you, you, those two things are connected. So if you've ever done any presenting, or if you've done anything where you've been, you've been under stress and you're, you're running on adrenaline, what happens is once you've done that presentation or once the stress situation is out of the way, you're, you have a dump of ad adrenaline and you feel knackered. If, if you've done it, you know what I'm talking about. I can, I can present for two hours. And I can keep going for two hours, not a problem. The moment everyone's gone, I am just sitting in a chair. I'm like, all that, that adrenaline's gone and I am tired. So this is what's going on in people with chronic fatigue. They, get, they feel ill 
up comes the adrenaline, body's flow of adrenaline, there's nothing to run from, nothing to fight for. The adrenaline, that can't last in your body for very long. The adrenaline drops and they feel tired and they go, I'm feeling really tired, I'm gonna be ill. Up comes the adrenaline. It's this vicious circle of feeling ill, feeling tired. But most medical people have no understanding of this at this point. Hopefully that this little conversation here is going to make you more aware of it. And you can deal with it with medication, but it's not dealing because they don't see it as a, as a psychological problem. But it's exactly the same as a phobia. And as hypnotherapists, we have we can we can deal with phobias. It's one of the most in, most um, effective things that we can do as hypnotherapists. I fully expect if someone sees me with a phobia, I can eliminate that phobia in 10 minutes. That sounds like a big statement, but I absolutely know I can do it. So it's the same with chronic fatigue. It seems like a massive problem and it is a massive problem. You know, I've seen people with chronic fatigue for 30 years. They haven't been getting on with their, their life because this continuous feeling of tiredness. And there's a reason for it. And once we understand that, it's just this link between feeling feeling ill and this adrenaline flood. I start to feel ill. I start to feel anxious. My body is now flooded with adrenaline. There's nothing to run for, nothing to fight for. I'm just feeling this anxiety and this stress. The adrenaline drops because it can't stay in your body forever. The moment it drops, you feel completely tired. I'm feeling tired. I'm going to be ill. Up comes the anxiety. Your body's flooded with adrenaline. It, it dissipates. I feel tired. I'm going to be ill. And you're on this vicious cycle of feeling ill and feeling tired. It goes on for, for years because we're not dealing with it as a psychological problem. So I'm going to demonstrate this to anyone that's got chronic fatigue. If anyone wants to do this that, and just have the experience, I'm not going to promise you anything, but we might as well run this as I would do with a client in my office. Is anyone up for it? Just put your hand up or switch your microphone on because I can't see everybody at the moment. I'm up for it, Freddie. I've had chronic who, who, who am I speaking to? Linda, Linda Johnson. Okay, Linda, can you, I'm just going to, I'm just going to find you what the best thing to do here is everyone else switch their camera off. Then it will just be me and Linda on the screen. Can you all do that for me right now? Everyone other than Linda, switch your camera off. I can see you there, Linda, but I can also see a few other people. We're getting there. I mean, anyone else that wants to join this, you're welcome to leave your camera on. You can do it as a group. It's not a problem. Anyone else that wants to be in this, and I'm not promising anything. Okay, well done, Diana. Are, are you on for this, Sonia? Do you want to be part of this demo? You do. And do you want to be part of it, Jeanette? Yeah? Okay. Right. So we should have like, I don't know, half a dozen people and myself on the screen. So let's zoom, because we've got plenty of time here. All right, we've got another five minutes. So, and we're all gonna, we're gonna sort your chronic fatigue out for you in the next five or 10 minutes, okay? And I know that's a massive statement because for you, it is everything. I understand that. And it's probably been like that for years. But my, my goal here is after this, and we all know because the next time you meet up, you can tell us, okay? And I don't want you, you, don't, you, you won't hurt my feelings by saying, you know, whatever you wanna say. But this is what's going to happen in the next few minutes. I'm going to hypnotise you. Have you all got the understanding of what, does that make sense to you? To, who here has had a viral illness at the same time having trauma? Put your hand up if that's been the case for you. Okay, excellent. So it kind of proves my point here. So can you understand how this is linked to, to that adrenaline flood? Yeah? Now, when we create any sort of behaviour or any kind of learning... And phobias are like a one-stop learning. We can learn phobias in different ways. We can learn it through having a parent that's frightened and flapping around. And we see them and we think that's got to be scary. So we learn it from that. Or there's the other way, the one-stop learning. A bee stings you, a dog bites you, someone hurts you. And in that instant, your brain goes, right, from now on, be aware. Anything that looks like that, be aware. And anything that happens in that situation, your body floods with adrenaline so you can run or fight. 
That's the way it works. In simple layman's terms, that's how we develop a phobia. But it's also the way that we develop chronic fatigue. All of you put your hand up when I said to you, did you have a viral illness at the same time as having the trauma? And you all said yes. So it kind of proves my point here. Now, when we create any kind of behavior, any kind of learned behavior, the moment it becomes an automatic function, something we do without thinking. It's like walking, talking, reading, writing. To try and overcome this consciously would be like me saying, oh, we forget how to speak or to listen to me and not understand me. You say, well, that's ridiculous. It's no longer something I think about, it's something I just do. And it's the same with chronic fatigue. You're not doing this. This is something that's happening automatically. And when we learn something like that to the point it becomes unconscious, it's almost as if we create a part of us that's then doing that job for us. I mean, you wouldn't have said it when it happened to you, but some part of your brain would go on, remind me, I never want to feel like this again. Anything that looks like this, feels like that, make me aware. And that's what's happening for you, okay? Because you start to feel ill, and then you start to feel anxious, and then you feel tired, and then it goes on. So in a moment, as strange as this may seem, I am gonna speak directly to the part of you that is running that protective mechanism that's been making you aware of everything that could possibly go wrong when you feel un unwell. Even if it's a cold or a flu, it's that part that's been running that protective mechanism and it will communicate. I don't know how, you don't know how, because it's an unconscious part of your being, but it will communicate. And the first thing I'm gonna do is ask it to explain what it's doing for you. And it is obvious, it's trying to keep you safe and well, that's its job. But I'm gonna ask the question anyway, and then I'm gonna ask it to go to your creative mind the part of you that dreams and has ideas and makes plans and allow your creative mind to run and flow and work and come up with lots of new choices, lots of new ways of keeping you safe and protected because it is not going to give up that job. Keep you safe and protected, but at the same time, allowing you the irrational, the freedom from the irrational fear and anxiety you've had about being ill. Allow the natural concerns that everyone should have so you can be safe, but allow the freedom from the irrational fear and anxiety. Now, providing your creative mind comes up to new choices, I've never known anyone who can't do this. I'm going to ask it to take that new choice and get it into your system so that from today you will never experience that chronic fatigue again. That is my goal, and it's a big statement. But I am not going to promise you anything. But on the other hand, I'm not either going to give you pills or potions. The worst thing can happen here is nothing. OK, but what if? Just imagine what's going to happen when you free that, that, that chronic fatigue forever. And that's my goal. OK, so all you have to do over the next five minutes is absolutely nothing. Look on this as time out for you. Listen to me if you want but I don't mean this rudely, I am not interested in your conscious mind. You have tried to overcome this consciously, it has not worked. This is an unconscious process that's running. Your unconscious mind will hear everything I've got to say. It will take from it what is needed for you to free yourself from this chronic fatigue. So what I'd like you to do is this, if you're ready to do this, if you're ready to be hypnotized, just nod your head or say, I'm ready, Freddy. I don't mind. Either of those things will do. All right, great. I want you to just get comfortable. Place your hands separately. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. You've got arms on your chair there, Sonia. So you're comfortable. You can rest your elbows on the chair, can you? Okay, I want you to do this for me. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it. In a moment, I'm going to ask you just to lift your hand up slowly, your right hand up slowly. But as you do that, I want you to take a deep breath in and close your eyes. I will then ask you to push your hand down. Your eyes will open, you'll relax even more. I'll ask you to lift your hand up. As you lift your hand up, your eyes will close. As you push your hand down, your eyes will open and relax even more, okay? You don't have to have arms on your chair, Natalie. You look fairly strong to me, all right? So it's just that I don't want, you know, if, you, if, you're, if you're a bit like me, you've got a frozen shoulder or something, you'd be comfortable. So are you ready to do this? Just, Allow your hand to lift up slowly and allow your eyes to close. Take that deep breath in. As that hand gets to the top, keep that breath for a second. 
Now breathe out and allow your arm to drift down. And as your arm drifts down, allow your eyes to open and relax even more. Great, as that hand begins to lift once again and your eyes close, take that wonderful deep belly breath in. And as you breathe out, just allow your eyes to open and relax even more. That's great, you're doing brilliantly. Now as that hand lifts and your eyes close and you take that wonderful breath in. And as that hand reaches the top, just close your eyes, take that breath. And feel that wrist stiffening now. That's right, feel that wrist stiffening, feel the elbow locking, feel the forearm muscle tightening, feel that, that bicep tightening into your shoulder, feel that arm down completely rigid as it hangs there. And as that hand hangs there all by itself, just imagine you're drifting into the most incredible space of bliss. Imagine it's happening automatically. Imagine there's nothing you can do about that. Imagine you're just dropping down through space and time toward a place of total bliss. Do it now. Imagine there's nothing you can do about that. And as you drift into that space, my voice is going to drift with you. And everything I say now becomes your reality. Every suggestion I give you, your mind and body will act upon at a molecular, cellular, and neurological level is now your reality. Now, as you drift even deeper, you can use your unconscious mind as a resource you can learn from. Really have an experience, one that's satisfactory to you. All that's needed to build a good rapport with your unconscious is to have a line of communication. It may be that the eye reflex changes and the eyes flicker. That's right. That's right. Or the head moves slightly to indicate yes. You can try and keep those eyes still for they flicker even more. It may be that the left hand starts to feel lighter and lighter, starts to drift up as the eyes flicker, or the right arm goes even higher. Only your unconscious mind knows which you'll use. So as you drift deeply into hypnosis now, even deeper than before, I'd like your unconscious mind to search for all the things in your life and pick one thing that is of vital and utmost importance to your life, your energy, your freedom, your well-being, something you love to be free of, something that no longer suits you. And when the unconscious mind's made that choice, I want it to increase those signals. I don't know if it a left hand, right hand, both hands that start to lift up first. But you'll know, that's right, feel that force around those wrists. Fingers lifting, hands lifting, higher and higher. Imagine there's nothing you can do about that now as those arms are pulled toward the ceiling. And now I'd like your unconscious mind as those hands are pulled toward the ceiling, and that's right, to hand over those signals to the part of you that is responsible for that protective mechanism that's been making you aware of everything that could possibly go wrong when you feel unwell. That's right, body moving, hands lifting. And when, when that part has taken full control of those signals, I want you to pull those hands even higher so with honest unconscious movements so that you and I understand it's taken control. Feel that force around those wrists like an invisible wire now. Head moving, hands moving, higher and higher. Now I'd like to ask that part to go to your creative mind. Find lots of new choices, lots of new ways of keeping you safe, well and protected, but at the same time allowing you the freedom from the irrational fear and anxiety you've been about feeling about being unwell. Allow you the natural concerns that everyone should have about their health, but allow you the freedom from that irrational fear. Each time it identifies a new choice, I want to increase those signals. That's right, you can try and hold those arms still if I want to go even higher now. 10, 20, 100 new choices. That's right, deeper, deeper down into that hypnosis now. That's right, and as that part searches, see yourself out there living your life with a new energy, free of the chronic fatigue, free to be. See it clearly in your mind. Go and step into that body and feel what it feels like that freedom. Remember those times in your life when you had that energy and that life and feel that force around those wrists. 10, 20, 100 new choices now. You know you have a super powerful unconscious mind and it's working for you. That's right, Sonia. It wants you to be happy. It wants you to be well. It's a superpower. And to prove how powerful it is, I want you to try and hold those hands still. Finally go even higher now. Feel that force, winching them up toward the ceiling. 
Try and hold them still, find to go even higher. Try and get them down and find to go even higher. Do not want you to pretend. Push even harder, find to go even higher now. That's right, stay in that deep trance, go a thousand times deeper. And as those hands are pulled toward the ceiling, open your eyes, watch those hands going up. That's right, try and get them down, find to go even higher. Understand you have tapped into a superpower here today. And you have that power within you from today. Whenever you want to use that power, close your eyes, go even deeper. Whenever you want to use that power, you repeat the word relax four times in your mind. You're going to go back into this state. Now I'd like to ask that part that runs that protective mechanism that's been making you aware every time you've been ill to pick as many new choices. Pick one of those choices that will keep you safe and protected, but allow you total freedom from the chronic fatigue. And when it's done that, I want you to pull those hands together, clasp them together so that you and I understand. Get ready, because when those hands touch, feel it now. That's right, Jude. When those hands touch, when those hands clasp together, you're going to have a moment of enlightenment, a moment of freedom you may have never experienced before. And feel that feeling now going through your body. That's right, Jeanette. Feel those changes taking place in your body. That's right, Diana. Feel it now. And I want you just for a moment to think about the people you love, people that love you, the people you've helped, the people that you've loved. And feel that love right now like a burning hot sun in a summer sky. Shrink it down to a white hot nuclear powered ball of light as big as a golf ball. Pull that into the very core of your being. Feel it flooding your body and your mind. Going into every cell, every fiber. It's every ounce of fatigue disappears from your body. Every ounce of anxiety disappears from your mind. Feel it now. Put it into your very heart center. That's right, Sonia. And feel that love and that light now. Let that lift you up and from today, no matter how hard you try, you will never experience that fatigue again. The harder you try to remember what it felt like, the more energized, the more free you become. Feel it now. Go over with your unconscious, often as you need to, to know that you're free. Only when the unconscious mind knows and has made those changes at a molecular cellular neurological level that will allow you that freedom forever. Only then, and the unconscious mind accepts the changes made. Because in a moment, I'm going to count to 10. And every suggestion I've given you, every suggestion you've given yourself for well being is now your reality. On eight, your eyes will open. You are going to feel incredible, like you've had the tongue weight lifted, like you've had the blinkers removed. You're going to feel incredible. A new energy, a new life. And on 10, that feeling of empowerment, that feeling of freedom and well-being is going to grow stronger day by day. Get ready. One, feeling absolutely wonderful. Two, to achieve that feeling of freedom and energy. Three, a feeling of freedom from every irrational fear and anxiety you've had about being ill. Four, feel a force of that healing energy flooding your body and your mind now. Feel it, lifting you up, lighting you up. Five, Incredibly alive now. Six, seven, eight, eyes opening, feeling absolutely incredible. Nine, ten. Okay, excellent. How are you feeling, Sonia? Switch your mic on. Let me know how you feel. All of you can switch your mic on. Just let me know how you feel. <clears throat> Bounce with my arms were unlocking and a lot lighter. Okay, good. Well, look, as I said, I'm not promising you anything, but what if? What I fully expect is that you'll forget. And I don't know whether it will be five minutes, 10 minutes, an hour from now, 20 years from now, when you suddenly realize you've been thinking about something else entirely, every ounce of that fatigue disappeared right here, right now. And be aware that those changes have taken place because you've lived your life for a long time with that fatigue and with that anxiety, recognize those two things aren't connected and you can, and there are times you're gonna get tired. There will be times, but understand that's because you've, you're working or you're doing something different, okay? And just do yourself that kindness. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope those watching enjoyed it. Thanks very much. All of you can come back in, switch your cameras on. Thanks, Jeanette. Thanks, Jude. Thanks Thank to all you, of you. Thank you. I'm going to hand over to, um, to Naveed. Any questions about what Mark and I have done, please ask. And if I can answer them, I will. 
I Switch felt your mic. You... Next question. Shall I go? Um, I, I think both of what you've both said made a lot of sense to me because I could recognise what's happened in my past with that connection, as you said, with the viral illness and the anxiety or the trauma in my life. And because it's not happened just the once, but several times, I recognise that's possibly why it's taken me longer to get better. Um, and I know I felt really ill today because I had a very stressful day yesterday. And so each time I have a stressful time, the fatigue and the symptoms of the chronic pain and everything seem to be exacerbated the next day. So it'll be interesting because I'm about to lose my job. <laughs> oh, no. Well, yeah, well, I'm fully, I'm fully expect to get some good news from you. But you can see how those things connect and it's not connected at a conscious level. And we have no control over it. Once that connection's been made, it's just in there and we can talk about it forever. But what hypnosis does, this is the joy of hypnosis for me, it gives the operator, the hypnotist, access or gives me the ability to give you access to those underlying programs. So you can go in and change them at that fundamental level. And once it's changed, it's changed. It's like scratching a record. It cannot play in the same way again. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you, Linda, and, and all of you that's just experienced that. Let me know how you get on. Thank you. I will do. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I was hoping my daughter would be on today, but she hasn't managed to get on. But she she had a Coxsackie virus when she was about 14. She's now 56. And uh, chronic fatigue seemed to come up when she was about 20. Um, no, maybe 20, 21. And she hasn't lost it at all. It's blighted her life completely. And we have thrown... Well money at it over this is, the years and nothing this is, recorded, this is recorded so you know get us to play it and just go through the session with me and yeah. see what happens you've nothing to do by it you know that's what i say all the time it's not it, this, this is not we're not giving you any kind of any kind of no um, i can see i i see that it, it, it could be very very valuable well, that's imagination, but what if yeah i mean she got to the point where you know we couldn't do any more because it was all hope you know, maybe this will work, but it didn't. Well, maybe that will work, and it didn't. Please don't do any more okay. for me. It's, you know, we can't do anything. And she's just struggled and struggled and struggled for all these years. Oh, it's it's really very tough. tough. How it is. And, and, and for me to life say, life. And it, for me to say to someone like your daughter who's been suffering for 50 years, in the next 10 minutes, we can get rid of this. It's a big ask for people to accept it. But you've just got to open your mind to it. And that's my, my thinking on it. Um, once, you, once people see how that's connected, and I, I, what do you think about it, Naveed, the way I've explained that? Does it make sense to you? I think um, we've had an amazing session with Freddie and Mark today, and the explanation has been very clear cut. And I, what's um, great about it is this is nothing different to what you, do, what you do normally with your clients, and it's the way that you explain it to the layperson. And, and people understand the connection and, and why the symptoms might be coming on and how the techniques that you use might be able to help try and eliminate it. And it's, it's interesting you say, you know, people have problems like this for 10, 20, 30 years, and it's not just chronic fatigue, it's a lot of different things. And, and to be able to say to them, you know what, in 10 minutes, we can make a massive difference. That's a real stumbling block for a lot of people. And I think once you've managed to get them over the fact that actually things can be better by doing things in a way that no one's actually approached you about before, that's the first, that's a big hurdle to, to jump over. And once you've managed to crack that nut, um, the, you know, the, the, the sky's the limit. There's, there's so many possibilities with this stuff. So thanks, Freddie. That's, that's a really good explanation. I think providing we're not promising, promising things, we're saying this is, a, this is an opportunity to try it try this the worst thing happens nothing happens you know I, I'm 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 I don't I was just going to say I'm not a healer well, I'm not a, I don't do anything in the therapy room I, all I am is a catalyst to help the client get in touch with their own abilities to heal that's all I do there's nothing coming from me there's no kind of force coming from me to do any kind of healing or any change work all I'm doing is like Mark said is getting their conscious mind out of the way for a moment so the unconscious mind, which is them, that can do the healing, goes, okay, what do you want me to do? 
And then we give it an opportunity with paying its permission. That's how I see it. The client gives itself permission to ignore or switch off the pain. That's the only explanation I can give. And people do. They don't understand that they can do give their self permission. With chronic fatigue, if they look on it as we just explain it and go, okay. So this is how it's connected and it's connected my brain. If we can separate, Mark would say, you know, to um, to to break that pattern. And then you can you can do that. And we can do it with so many different things that at the moment are only being treated with medication and not and and you know, it's still not touching the problem. Absolutely. They're right. We've had a question here from um, Louise saying, would this technique be suitable for someone with fibromyalgia? Well, Louise, the, t the topic of this evening is chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. So absolutely, this is a technique that um, is, is useful for people who suffer with those chronic conditions. Um, as, as we move through the series of lectures that we're holding through the College of Medicine, what you'll find is a running theme that actually the techniques we use are very, very similar, depending on which, uh, no matter what um, problem is presented in front of us uh, by the patient. Um, and what's interesting is we, we call this, we have this term of medically unexplained uh, conditions that Mark talked us through at the beginning of the seminar. And I think it's important to realize that actually, um, everyone suffers with everyone who suffers with medically unexplained conditions are all linked in some particular way and there's a very strong mind body connection and, and that's the reason why these techniques actually work really really well it's also the reason why the western world the western medicine in particular don't really go down that route because their their focus is more on pills and potions like freddie says you know um, so, uh, you know, I, I've treated many, many patients with fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, chronic headaches, irritable bowel syndrome. And what you'll find is that no matter which area of the body the, these symptoms tend to hit, they're all very, very similar. Um, and actually the techniques that we're using can are very kind of universal across uh, the, the, the different spectrums of, of conditions that are out there. What's important to realize is the individual behind the problem, like Mark said at the beginning, you know, it's getting that conscious mind out. They've all had some kind of an experience at a younger age. They've, they've had uh, the, the viral infection, but it's usually coupled with a, a, a period of time that was under immense stress, whether it be exams, divorce, um, uh, work pressures, whatever it might be, and, and getting the client to realize that actually there is that connection, that was probably the trigger, and finding out how you can move beyond that, that's, that's the real challenge. Yeah. Uh, is, no, explain, explain to my clients that if it's physical pain or emotional pain, and as I say, you know, the, the medical doctors, and that you, that obviously, we have to go to our doctor and, and they do fantastic work because there are diseases that can be treated with medication. But when we're talking about a syndrome, things like fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, um, ch chronic pain of any kind, where those things are no longer of any kind of use to the person. They're not, all pain is a signal, we know that, to draw our attention to something that's not right. But once, that, once that's been dealt with, if that, if that pain continues, that fear continues, then, then it's, it, it can only be treated psychologically. Nothing exists outside of your skull except as perception. Even the pain in your body is perception. It's quite a good thing to get your head around. We think we, we and it, when I said this to my son, he said, well, it's making us seem less human to say that love hate, anger, emotion, pain, none of it exists outside our skull. If you've got a pain in your leg, and that's a signal of something's wrong with your leg, you've sprained your leg, you've broken your leg, you've hurt your leg. If you were to, if you were to break your neck and sever your uh, spinal cord, you could have that leg taken off and you would not feel it. Although the pain is registering in your leg, that is not where the perception is. It's in your brain. So if you think about all of your pain like that, then once, you, once you're past the point of it being useful, and there is a use for pain, it draws our attention to things that need attention. But once that's passed, the brain for some odd reason, and using the arrow technique, which we were talking about the last session, it's, it's 
people, I've had doctors and surgeons say, how does this work really? And I have no idea because I'm not a medical person. But what I do say is that I've known people in battle situations who are under, their, their life is under immediate threat and they don't feel pain. So we all have an ability, we know it, to under certain circumstances to switch off pain. And so I think the arrow technique and some of the other techniques, I'm saying that because it's my technique, but there are lots of other techniques to deal with pain. It's almost like we give ourselves permission to ignore it. This is no longer any good, I can ignore it. And so none of this stuff exists outside of our, outside of our skull. And that's why hypnosis and other therapeutic tools can work on it. Um, As you say, I'll get a bit passionate. Can, can, I, can I just say before, time's getting against us slightly, but uh, there's, uh, I put a few resources into the chat box and others have, have taken the hint and, and added stuff that they found helpful, some, some useful books, Stephen Porges and uh, Peter Levine, amongst others. Uh, so people haven't looked in the chat, the chat bit, uh, maybe have a look at that. Um, the next first Thursday is going to be the second Thursday uh, of May because the, there's a, the, con the college are involved in the, the uh, social prescribing conference at the end of that first week in, in, in March rather. So the next one is going to be the 11th of March, Thursday the 11th of March. There'll be a flyer coming around in the usual way. Um, we've touched on it already tonight. But we, we thought the topic for the next useful topic would be to cover anxiety and, and panic and response to stress. So Freddie's given you a nice taster tonight of, of, of where that might be coming from. Um, so that's what we propose to do. We're, we're, we've got a, a program for, for several other sessions after that. But, so if people have got any other suggestions of the things they'd like us to talk about, and I've each let the cat out of the bag really, because the techniques are pretty much the same, whatever, it's just it's changing the, 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 the content changes. Um, but the, the principles we tried to spell out tonight, uh, essentially are, are, are pretty are versatile and pretty broadly applicable. Um, but we're happy to cover anything that people want. So you know, thank you for attending. Um, but five, five the, the other thing, you'll get some feedback forms, and please, please, when the feedback comes, would, would you let us have some responses? Because that really helps us to know, you know, whether we're on the right track and, and what would be helpful. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, fibromyalgia can be can be dealt with very, very quickly. The first Sunday of every month, I run a free pain find it on my website um it's free to anybody so if you know someone that's suffering from fibromyalgia or chronic fatigue or any other kind of pain related well when i'm talking about chronic pain pain that has outlived its usefulness then just send them along i've done it for the last couple of years now first sunday of every month you'll find it's a free session um you'll see you probably find some of them on on my YouTube channel, but tell anybody if they want to come along, as I said, nothing to lose, half an hour, three quarters hour of their time. I'm going to say one more thing. All of you watching this can learn the arrow technique. You, you, I, there's, there's a thing I did for, I think it's called Health Flicks on, through the College of Medicine on YouTube channel. Go and learn how to do it. Don't have to be a therapist, don't have to be a doctor to use the arrow technique. And it's not hard to learn, and you can learn it. I want everyone who's ever got in, anyone they love in pain to learn it out. Have a go, with nothing to lose. How do we access your, your, um, your hypnotherapy sessions? Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, it's Freddie Jackwin, you can see my name there. Yep. It's Freddie Jackwin Hypnosis, and you'll just see this. All the things I've done for the College of Medicine over the last year is on there. Um, lots of other stuff on there. It's all free. But the one and that you do free every month. month. Sorry? The one you do free every month. Wow. That's on the college's website, Judith. Oh, is it? Okay. And on our YouTube channel, too. Uh, okay. I'll post it. Yeah, what, what's the name of your app, Freddie? No, yeah. the, the Arrow app is it's called Painkiller, but without an E in it. So pain, kill... With the NAR. You can get it onto your, you can get it on download to your Apple phone, to your Android phone, to your oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Apple app. It's free. It's free. You go on Apple, Apple Store or Google, Google Play or whatever it is, any of those markets, it's free to download. And thousands of people are using that app. 
all we're asking for is your feedback because the problem we have in hypnosis is the evidence base. There's a lot of anecdotal um, evidence, if you like, but no kind of empirical evidence. But what we're getting from the app is because it's a score at the front and a score at the end, it's given us an opportunity with thousands of people to, to see how effective that is. It's free to download. You've got, you've got to put out my voice for 10 minutes. But if you know anyone in pain, point them towards that app. It's free, as I said. Uh, it's called a painkiller app. Put it, get it on Google, get it down to your iPhone or your Android phone. Thousands and thousands of people are using it now. And I want it to go, I want it to go to millions of people. Um, it's excellent. Give us feedback on it. That's it. Perfect. I just want to say a really big thank you to everyone who attended today. Um, and for those who participated, it, it was really, really made the session amazing. Um, I'm going to draw this session to an end because we've, we've run over. Um, but I really hope that we can see you all at the next session. Uh, not, is it, well, just remind us of the date again, Mark. It's the 11th of March. 11th of March. Se second, it'll be second Thursday rather than first. Uh, and I, we, we would really be grateful if you could have a look at the feedback forms when they come out to you. You'll all be getting a recording of this session. So feel free to practice it on yourselves. Um, practice the technique with, with your friends and loved ones. And we really want to hear your feedback. Uh, really want to hear how you guys are getting on um, so we can help to make these sessions better for you. Thanks, everyone, for joining. It's been great. Thanks all of you who joined in the demo. Thank you. It was really Thanks good. Everyone. Thanks very much. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.